Hi everybody, welcome to another video. I came across this website. Um, I was just looking into how emotions um, affect the masses, uh, our society, communities, and the world at large. And I am no mystic by any means. I'm not a new ager. But I know that the people who do practice witchcraft, sorcery, um, people who are in the Illuminati, and secret societies who practice these things, they use these techniques to uh, control and influence people's minds and behavior and their emotions. So I just wanted to look at this and just kind of get an understanding as to what they believe and how what they present to us, the news they give us, the feedback that we are bombarded with every day, how that affects our daily lives. So looking at this page, scroll down, it says vibrational frequency of emotions, where do you sit on the scale? It gives us the information. You probably already know that the key to spiritual health is raising your vibrations, but did you know that different emotions have different vibrational frequencies? When you embody a higher emotion, your vibrations will rise. If it is a lower emotion, and they will fall. Which emotions you embody have a significant effect on your life? We have split the emotions into four distinct categories, plus enlightenment, which can help you understand the ordering of them. So the lowest frequency range, 20 to 75 hertz, includes shame, guilt, apathy, and grief. The lowest emotions on the scale are the best ones based around the lower chakras. It says they are all paralyzing emotions driving you to inaction. This is what makes them a lower frequency than the next group. So these, so shame, guilt, apathy, and grief are paralyzing emotions driving you to inaction. Feeling bad about yourself, feeling sorry for yourself, or feeling nothing places you at the lowest vibrational frequencies of emotions. It can be difficult to climb out of this way of thinking on your own, so getting help to raise your vibrations is vital. Okay, the next range or category, um, 100 to 175 hertz, include fear, desire, anger, and pride. This set of emotions is around the ego. Unlike the first group, these are active emotions that drive you to action. Unfortunately, they are often drive you to bad actions and bad behavior. People acting out of fear, unbridled desire, anger, or to protect their pride usually don't make rational decisions. However, they can act as motivation for higher purposes and progress, so they aren't entirely negative emotions. Pride sits at the top of the group, making it very close to 200 hertz, which is generally thought of as the midpoint as humanity vibrates at roughly this frequency. So fear, desire, anger, and pride fit into that category. The next category we have 200 to 350 hertz include courage, neutrality, willingness, and acceptance. Moving above the 200 hertz mark, we have rational higher emotions. These emotions are all controlled, intentional, and mostly neutral. If you have a vibrational frequency above 200 hertz, then you are contributing to the overall raising of humanity's vibrational frequency. So this is like a collective thing. They believe that, obviously, you know, the more love you spread, which is true, you know, we have to, to love each other, to love one another. The thing is, is, is that with the New Age movement, with, you know, using crystals and, and uh, going to um, a psychic or, you know, using your, using different new age methods, let's just say, you know, trying to channel something inside of you or through you, that is not the way you do it because you are basically going to allow an entity to come into you and to inhabit you. 
a demonic presence that may disguise themselves as something that is positive and um, healthy for you. But as time goes on, you will see. So that, you know, but, but I love, true love, the Bible, the, the biblical love, you know, love of humanity, love for your fellow man, um, trying to help others um, to, to love your neighbor, um, you know, that agape love. Yes, that, that is true. That is what definitely helps to raise, I just think, the, the standard of humanity. Okay, to add to that, it says, notice also that we are moving up through the chakra system. These emotions are strongly connected to the solar plexus, heart, and throat chakras. The solar plexus, heart, and throat chakras. And I'm going to go a little bit in, more into detail about those three things. Um the next stage or category is 400 to 600 hertz, which include reason, love, joy, and peace. This is the next grouping is about as high as most people go in terms of the vibrational frequency of their emotions. These emotions are the highest sacred emotions that vibrate at the highest frequency. Notice that peace outranks love. This is because love is so closely linked with other more base emotions, whereas peace is pure in its intent. Very few people live at this frequency, but in our better moments, we find ourselves up there. For instance, when falling in love, we spend a lot of time at this end of the scale, though we also delve for lower emotions like desire too. And then the final stage is enlightenment, which is at 700 hertz. Enlightenment isn't quite an emotion, but it is a state of mind and has the highest vibrational frequency of all. Very, very few people often attain this level of vibrational frequency. Those that do have an incredible effect on humanity and in some ways are dragging the rest of us up this hierarchy, whether we like it or not. Okay, so this is from CosmicMinds.net, this article. So going back to, let's see, oh yeah emotions that are strongly connected to the solar plexus, heart, and throat. Um, I'm going to see if I can pull up a graph of that. Images. Okay. So this looks like a good image. Okay, the solar plexus, that is the, okay, the plexus referred to as the solar plexus because of the um, radical, what is it, radially, oh gosh, let me see, uh, because of its radially oriented connection to organs such as the liver, diaphragm, stomach, etc. So this is what the area that we're talking about. Um, the solar plexus right here, you know, the midway of your, um, of your rib cage, you know, um, right underneath your heart area and your lungs, but you have the diaphragm, you have, um, let's see if I can get a better picture. Okay. So the solar plexus. Okay, it says the solar plexus, a collection of two bundles of nerves or ganglion that intertwine and pass each other at a central location in the abdomen. This is one of the images. So, you know, when you practice yoga and the channeling and the chakras and trying to get in touch with your different vibrations and frequencies and trying to reach, you know, this nirvana all the way up. And they say that there is a, a snake, a serpent that is inside of us called the Kundalini serpent or spirit that is supposed to come out of you, which is nothing but a snake. Okay. 
Um, but when you look at just some of these, um, these words and definitions of, of what, you know, color, yellow, force, masculine, meaning, city of jewels, trigger, center of spine, element, fire, sense. I mean, these, okay, so the Manipura, the Manipura, I am a novice to these things. So um, please forgive me if I have mis, um, uh, mispronounced some of these words. But... Um, Okay, here's a better one. Okay, so the solar plexus. Here it says, solar plexus, chakra, manipuric chakra. Okay, is yellow. The heart chakra, anahat, is green. And then the throat chakra is blue. And this article here says, okay, when you do this chakra meditation, you'll feel your energy flow. So it is all about getting your energy in those three places to feel yourself reaching higher and higher until you get to that enlightenment that they're telling you that you're going to get through doing a lot of this meditative, you know, of course, um, none of these things in and of themselves are bad per se, such as getting um, massaged or acupuncture or um, you know, meditating. But when you are doing it for the sole purpose of trying to reach this, the, the kundalini serpentine spirit that's inside, that happens to come from the caduceus as well as the medical um, symbol. What is the medical symbol? Oops. I can type. Medical symbol, which is okay the caduceus the two snakes um well it actually says that the caduceus is the traditional symbol of hermes and features two snakes winding around an often winged staff it is often mistakenly used as a symbol of medicine instead of the rod of Asclepius. Asclepius. please forgive me for the mispronunciation so it's really the the, the let me see the rod of okay, it's Clepius. This one. So it's just real. It's the one snake that is coiled around the the staff. Or um, the rod of Clepius is an ancient Greek symbol associated with medicine, consisting of a serpent coiled around a rod. In ancient Greek religion and mythology, Clepius was the god of medicine and healing. Now, why? A serpent well it goes back to the Bible actually when it says you know just as Moses raised up the serpent in the wilderness Because whoever looked upon that rod with the snake on it, they were healed. But, <clears throat> of course, excuse me, what Satan does is he uses, he takes what God has given and put down. He tries to twist it and make it into his own thing. And um, it, it is not healing that they want. They want sickness and disease. They want the opposite, the polar opposite of health and healing and wellness, they want disease, sickness, and death, okay? So that is what it really is going to bring. And um, as I mentioned before, the is it no, it's with a K, Kundalini, yeah, Kundalini symbol, yeah. Um, <clears throat> go to images. And it's all here. And look at this image here, Kundalini. So it's it's supposed to be like just like we saw with the instead of the man 
sitting there in his yoga position or stance, um, you see the serpents. And this is what's supposed to be coming out of the person once they have reached the pinnacle of the, of the enlightenment or the, the nirvana that they're supposed to be getting. Okay, that, that, that an actual serpent will come out of them. Serpent power. So th that is really what they are worshiping and what they are using um, for these different um, methods, you know, I guess trying to get people to fit into these different categories. They want you to channel something. They want you to meditate and to, you know, clear your mind and to just all these, these new age philosophies, mystic um, witchcraft from hermeticism, as we saw Hermes, hermeticism, um, they, it, it's just witchcraft. It's witchcraft, sorcery, magic, all of those things. So going back to the previous, let's see, go back, go back, go back. So, okay, why do I say all this? Because, of course, we know in recent news that Kobe Bryant, along with his 13-year-old daughter and seven other people, one was um, a coach with his wife and his 13-year-old daughter, and I think the assistant coach and the pilot and two other people lost their lives in a helicopter crash. And I'm, you know, looking at the different things. I'm looking at the news. I'm looking at all the posts. I'm looking at the tributes, you know, for Kobe Bryant and his family. And then I'm looking at, oh, well, this is an Illuminati sacrifice, blood sacrifice. You know, either, either Kobe is not really dead or he is really dead, and this was, you know, he had to pay. He had to basically, you know, it was time for him to pay up, pay the devil. Or, you know, he, he had already so-called sold his soul to the devil, so the devil is here to collect, sort of like the movie, um, Oh God, You Devil, you know, with George Burns. However, as I tell people, you cannot sell your soul to the devil. Because Jesus Christ already paid for it, and it's too expensive, okay? The devil can't afford your soul. But what he can do is convince you that you are not saved. Now, I don't know if these people ever confessed Jesus Christ as their Lord, as, well, as their Savior, if they ever accepted him as their Savior by believing on him, believing that he died for their sins. What is it? If you um, confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, and you believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. You will be saved for that belief, for believing on Jesus Christ, that he died for your sins. He died on the cross. He shed his blood. That blood paid for your sins in full. He was buried, and he rose on the third day. The resurrection, he rose with all power. Okay? Believing, believing. That is what saves you. Now, when you start to trail off and trail away in your life and thinking that you're signing over your soul or whatever. No, that is not what is happening. Okay, but you're going to be, your life is going to be cut short, yes, because these people don't play. And if you are playing them and saying, okay, I'm going to, um, in, in, in exchange for riches and wealth and fame, I'm going to, you know, allow you to take my life at, at some point. You know, you can have my soul, which is really my life. They're taking their mortal life. They're not taking their souls. They're taking their mortal life because their lives are cut so short. That's why they die so young, so early in life. 
and it's a shame. And so, I mean, I used to listen to, okay, these people are under ba underground, um, some kind of underground bases, and it's like cities that go, and that, that stretch the whole length of, you know, the um, anything that's above ground, there are underground cities that are just as big and vast and all that, and that's where they have chosen to be um, for the rest of their lives. You know, I, I no longer cater to those things like that. I do know that the predictive programming, all of those things are also <laughs> for a reason. Because, once again, that, that goes into the fear. The, you know, we're, we're just like, what to believe. So confusion, confusion was not, I don't think that that was mentioned. But that would definitely be, I would say in the 100 to 175 hertz range where the confusion, because that's where fear comes from. When you're confused, you don't know um, what's true and what's not true. And that will lead you to act out of, you know, you'll, you'll do something just uh, spur of the moment. The act, it says the act of emotions that drive you to action. Yeah. Confusion will also do that because you're like, what am I going to do? Who, who am I going to believe? What, what, what's going on? What's really, really going on? And, and you'll just do something crazy without thinking it through. Um, just um, something very spur of the moment. You know, you, you are basically just not in your right mind at that time. You have just allowed the devil to take over your mind. So that is that is why I'm saying, but yeah. All of these news events and breaking news and everything, that is definitely the powers that be to continue to make us feel these ways because this article is right about, you know, how, how everything works on our emotions because we are very emotional people. And um, that is why we need to raise our spirit level, meaning our faith, okay? We need to have faith in the one true God who, you know, is the, not just the creator, but the sustainer, the protector, the provider, he's, he's everything. So when you put your faith in him and you understand those things, you can be at peace without having to go through these, these meditation cycles or whatever, you know, reading the Bible, praying, studying, meditating on the word. Absolutely wonderful. Great. What we're supposed to do unlike trying to reach some some kind of you know because either way you are still going about it the method that you're using is um it is it is pagan ritualistic um satanic you are trying to allow an, a deity or some entity to, not a deity, but an entity to come into your, your body and to, you know, do that. So if you have not confessed Jesus as your Savior, if you have not believed on him, then yes, you are at risk. You are definitely at high risk for, for being taken over. Not just your, your body, but also your soul, your eternal soul. So um, I just... That is, you know, I, I know that that is what the enemy wants. He wants us to be so depressed, sad, afraid. You know, th the reason that these, the scary movies, the horror movies, like the main one that I can think of is, um, what was it? Um, Nightmare on Elm Street. A Nightmare on Elm Street where Freddy Krueger, what did he want? What did he have to have? Fear. You had to be terrified, scared. He got power from the screams. The screams, you know, and that's why he would he would get you in your dream when you're at the most vulnerable state. You know, you can't really do anything in your dream and you, you, you have to wake up, you know, to see things. But it's very symbolic, you know, about people who are awake versus people who are asleep, you know, that you can be walking around and still be asleep. But he wants the fear. He wants the, the, the screams, the, the, um, all the horror, being horrified. And he, he loves all of that. And that's the devil. He really feeds off of us being at our most base. Because when you are depressed, when you are um, just living in fear from day to day, 
anxiety, um, just you're not in your right mind. You aren't, and, and you are unstable, and you're double-minded. And I will continue that, yeah, a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. There's nothing that you can do that is going to be, um, you know, thinking clearly, rationally, because you have given all of that over to the devil, who is the author of confusion. I mean, let's just think about it. When you think two contradicting, contrary things, two um, inherently opposite things, like pain is pleasure. If you can think that pain is pleasure, that is how they mind controlled MK Ultra. A lot of kids during the 50s and 60s during experiments, they gave intense pain, so much pain that they had to, you know, compartmentalize their brains in order to find some pleasure in it. So pain and pleasure is mixed together. It's just, it's very Orwellian. It's very 1984 when it says, you know, ignorance is strength. War is peace. When you can think of those two distinctly opposite things as, as uh, being the same or being um, complementary, like one, you know, I can't have one without the other in the sense of that is, that is the goal, you seeking pleasure through pain, you seeking peace through war. You know what I'm saying? You seeking um, love from hate. And, and another thing is, of course, just how we use language today. You know, kids are like, oh, that's sick. That's sick. You know, every generation has their slang and, you know, jargon, but the words mean the opposite of what they really are. Bad words have become words that mean good things, positive things. Negative words have become positive words. I guess that's, that's what I'm trying to say. But that is, that's mind control. That is how they do it, this duality. If you have duality in your mind, confusion, that is what mind control is, not knowing what to believe. So when we have all these different stories coming out at the same time and they contradict each other and you don't know what to believe, confusion. That is the number one weapon that Satan uses to defeat us other than pride. Satan is the author of confusion, and he is going to continue to make you confused. So the things that we see, I mean, I am just praying one way or the other for just the families who are affected by all of these things and the people around, just everyone, everyone in the world, really, because we, we all need to just hold our loved ones near us who are near and dear to us, just hold them so close to us. So close. And to pray every day for protection, for God's guidance, for his direction. And, you know, thank God, he says, new, you know, new mercies I give you every day. And we, we have his mercy, we have his grace, a fresh batch made just for that day, each and every day, because we know we use it all in that day's time because the devil is so busy. He is so busy. The enemy, our adversary, Satan, all, he's, all he does day and night is walks about the earth seeing whom he may destroy. He wants to what? Kill, steal, and destroy. That's all. As many people as he can. And even if he does not have your soul, he wants to take your life. He wants to take your life, rip your life away from you. And that's going to also affect other people because losing someone, it's, it's a lot. Because at the other thing, you know, he wants to get rid of the family. He hates the family structure. So, so however this falls, I know that it's just a sad tragedy. And... Either way it works out, they are definitely, you know, this is affecting all of us in some way, in a very negative way. But we can just pray to God for his discernment, for his peace, 
for his peace, for his love, and for us to just use this as a reminder that, you know, time is short. Time is winding up. We don't know what tomorrow will bring. So we have to use our time wisely, more wisely than ever, being activists, telling people about the good news of Jesus Christ, and just tell them, tell them all truth, all truth, all truth, leading them to all truth. Jesus is the truth. Jesus is the truth. So when you share Jesus, you are giving them the truth. And we have to just be bold about it and just work while it's day because the night cometh where no man can work. So we have got to just work and be able to be bold in our walk and tell people about Jesus Christ, tell him that, you know, tell them that he is the way, he is the truth, he is the life. And no man can come to the Father except by Jesus Christ. Well, this concludes this video for today. I know it was kind of all over the place, um, but I just wanted to express my thoughts today, and I hope that this does help someone and touches someone. As always, I ask for your comments, um, and if you have not subscribed to my channel, please do so today. Thank you so much, and if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Thank you so much, and I will see you soon.